In this video, I will discuss printers in terms of first what it is, two what are the requirements to run it, three installation, and four our first run. All this is um, with respect to our project three, which is our first printers lab and project three is gonna be the first printers lab called printers user prod. So let's look at what printers is. So printers is a uh, is an operating system platform that allows us to do both development of, of a Linux-like OS, a Unix-like OS, doesn't really matter, that runs on the x86 hardware. It has a built-in test suite, which means that I will be able to not only develop modules. So the way Pintos works is, if you think of an operating system as a box, we have the operating system, we have user programs that run which we call as applications that run outside and the operating system runs on top of a hardware and so what we will see is this operating system as we will as we will design it is can be thought of being made up of various modules and there might be many modules for now we will think of our modules as being uh, being our user prog module which allows us to run user programs. So if you have user programs that run, they make system calls into the user prog module. There are other modules that we will be writing as we go along. There is a virtual memory module. There is a file sys module and even a thread scheduler module. So in, in this class, we will mainly focus on these two modules. So, so what, what we need in order to get this to work is, is because it's an OS platform and we want to be able to run it, we will run Pintos on emulated hardware. In other words, we won't run it on real hardware. The hardware we will we will run on will be emulated, and there are two options for emulating um, for us, and uh, that Pintos has been tested for. One is called Kemu, and the other is called Box. And in this class, we will mainly use the Kemu emulator because it's faster, uh, whereas Box is actually feature rich, but it is not as fast. And the reason for speed will become obvious to you when you realize that every time we test a particular, run a test case, we will launch the operating system, run the test case, see if it performed as expected, and then we shut down the operating system um, and, and we repeat this process. So um, just to give you an idea, user prog has approximately 80 test cases. So if you have to run the operating system 80 times, boot it up, launch it, and then quit it 80 times, it's going to take a long time. So running it in a fast emulator is going to serve us really well. So let's get to our next point, which is requirements. 
the requirements are constantly kind of changing uh, in that uh, what what we really need is just KMU, um, an emulator that we can run our OS in. So we need KMU, we need to be able to develop it. So we need a make like environment, make and related tools. We need a GCC compiler um, and, and we need some sort of a GCC, the, the suite of GCC, which includes GCC and GDD for for compiling and and uh, for for debugging so these are the main requirements um, the the software we are providing um, the pintos comes from pintos originally came from a project at stanford um, and their original um, assumption was that you will run it on on linux so they were they mainly um, targeting Linux. Um, since since then, we have seen that it can be run. Um, we at at UT we have a way of running it on Mac OS, as well as on uh, Windows using Windows sub six WSL. So um, I'll mainly focus on on Linux, but everything I say should be able to uh, translate on these other platforms as well. So as far as requirements are concerned, we want to make sure that whatever platform you're running, you have an up-to-date version of all the development utilities. Um, dev these are all the development stuff, dev utilities, and KMU. So as long as you have those, um, so if you're running in, in, in uh, Linux, for instance, you'll make sure that there are you perform some apt um, apt installs of various things. Uh, one of them is KMU and the others are uh, GCC and so on. So we install all those things. Um, there will be a readme. There is a readme uh, inside. In fact, it is a file called readme.nb that you will find in the install in the in the project 3 um, targz so there's a project 3.pgz on on canvas when you download it you will find um, you will find inside it a uh, 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 readme.md under a uh, folder called uh, for now it will be under under the parent folder which is project 3 so So let's um, assume that you installed it. So I'm going to show you where I would get it from. So here's my dash, my my systems programming site. If I look at my assignments, I have under assignments I have project three, and in project three, this is the file that I'm looking at. Um, So, second, so this is your project, and if you if you were to download it, then you will get this file from here. Once you click this, what will happen? is you will get a tgc file and then assuming that you know how to untar it so i have a file called project3.tgc i'm going to untar because it's a tgc file i'm going to do a tar with an xvzf and give the name of the file which is project3.tgc which i already did here so i'm not going to do it again but that's the command you will run and at that as soon as you run it you will get a folder called project 3. Actually, let me go ahead and do it uh, and there's no harm. So now I have a project 3. So I'm going to enter this folder called project 3. And I have actually previously run this. So I'm going to show you what is in my readme dot So 
SMD. Uh, it goes through the installation steps. It says you need both the utilities and KMO. So that's the first step. We will install, make sure that we do an apt update and um, we do an apt update and then install the build essential core utilities, GCC, KMO and all those. So that will be a long installation and if you're running it on Mac OS, you'll need Brew and you use, once you have Brew installed, then you can do the same equivalent which are um, getting all the uh, GCC utilities uh, and bin utilities and GDB and KMO. The main step that we will all be, uh, you will be required to do as soon as you get past these, that these steps is you will run a run a utility called install.shell. So if you just run install.shell, it will go through and tell you what to do. And most importantly, all it will tell you is to add these two statements to your to your um, bash RC and then source it, which I already did. So if I if I look at my echo dollar path, it should show me at the end of my it, at the end of my installation when I run it and if I if I add it properly to my path it should show me the fact that that the place where I installed it, which happens to be right here, is in my path. So that's the important part. Once you install it, then you can go ahead and and run our first test case. So you're gonna go into user prog and then you're gonna do a make. Make will uh, it should it currently says there's nothing to do because I already built one. So if I do a make clean then it will clean it and if I now do a make it should compile the entire project so there's going to be a bunch of files that will compile and it will build your final final executable and all of that is built in a folder here called the build folder so there's a build folder that's created as soon as you run make and that has all the things so I'm going to um, um, ask we have some utilities that we provided they're all in the utils folder so you can say run underscore test and you can run your first test. One of the tests is called arg none, which is, an, which is the one I'm going to be more mainly focusing on. So if you say run arg, run test arg none, it should run your first test, um, which happens to be, just a second, let's take a look at what it's called. Utils. And there is a, it's a single word and not with an underscore. So I'm gonna run run test, and this will run through. It'll run that particular test, and it says it. In this case, it simply says that I failed the test case, and it says that failed test are didn't produce any output. So this is what running a test case is. We will see later how we can run it in a debugger and so on. But this is our first video, which is explaining mainly how we do our, how, what to install and how to make our first run.